Hello again. This time we're looking at my old flat roof, which to be fair is long overdue a total replacement, but I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with it yet. It's had a few cheeky repairs over the years. In fact, last year I showed you how to do a temporary repair with an acrylic based paint on sealant. And in fact, that's still waterproof and holding good. But what I'm going to show you this time is a low cost paint on repair that's within the grasp of most people and it will seal the whole roof, not just small areas. The first place to start is with a clean dry roof and as you can see it's dry but not very clean. All we're going to do is thoroughly sweep the surface with a stiff bristle brush and if any of the dirt or moss is really well stuck that may also involve scraping it off with a paint scraper as well. What we need is a dust free, dirt free contact with the roof surface so we can prime it up in a moment. You'll probably find that any mineral finish or mineral edging like this grips onto dirt really well. So it's important to remember that any debris you leave on the face of your roof will hinder the bond we're looking to achieve. When you've removed as much as feasibly possible, just sweep it up or into the guttering ready for removal later on. This is a bitumen primer and all sorts of makes are available, but I'll provide links to the products I've used here at the end of the video in the iCards and in the description bar. The fastest and easiest way to apply the primer is with a standard 9 inch roller and if you haven't got a dedicated roller extension you can make one. Simply shove a broom handle straight inside the roller and here I'm screwing the roller into place but you could also use gaffer tape if you really wanted to. Just pour out some primer into a puddle, about a mug full or two at a time. Don't go berserk, this stuff goes a very long way. As you can see, I'm not bothering to cut in neatly with a brush, I'm just doing the whole lot with a roller, because I'll be stripping this roof off in the next year or two anyway. But if you want to do neat, a brush is best for the outside edges. Now let me explain at this point how much primer you want on the roof. And the answer is as little as possible to do the job. By all means be generous on your first pass, but on the second or third, what you're looking for is the least amount of primer as possible. Once it's done its job by bonding the loose dust particles to the surface of the roof, that's it. Any puddles of primer is not only a waste, it's going to take longer for your roof to dry. The exact same applies to the mineral edges or drips. Once you have it primed, roll it out, get rid of the excess. Less is more. With that done, you just need to let it dry or flash off. In the summer, this can be as little as 20 minutes, but in the winter, it can take a couple of hours. So go and have a tea break and come back when it's done. And when you can do this with it, as a minimum, you're ready for stage two. Now this is a roll of glass fibre scrim, and it's just like rendering or plastering scrim. And if you want to, you can skip applying this stuff totally, but I'm going to show you how it's done in case you want to. All I'm going to do now is place this onto the prime roof and roll it out. Just make sure that you get it nice and parallel. Now roll it to the outside edge of the roof and cut it just short of the drip edge. Next roll back the other side all the way back to the halfway mark and when you get there pin it in position with something just to stop it springing back or blowing around. Fantastic, now we're ready for the roof sealant and this is what I'll be using. Again, there's many manufacturers, but this is basically a solvent-based bitumen roof sealer, and 25 litres of this should be enough to coat this roof twice. Once you've popped the lid off, you're going to need to give it a stir, a good one. The solids always settle to the bottom and the liquids to the top, and obviously you want a consistent, even coating. So with a flat-sided stick, nice and carefully pull up all the solids from the bottom, and only when you're happy, stop mixing. Applying the roof coating needs nothing more elaborate than a decent soft bristled brush. A nice natural fibre like this works best, not too stiff and not too soft. If you don't want to work directly from a 25 litre container, consider cutting a couple of inches off one side of your brush with a hacksaw. Not only does it make it slightly easier to work with, but you can also get it in a standard builder's bucket. Hand it if you don't want to lug a whole 25 litres up the roof with you. Back on the roof, we can now start applying the roof sealant to the roof. And because we've already primed it, it should stick like an absolute beauty. It's just a matter now of applying about 2 millimetres of sealer over the roof everywhere that the scrim will sit when it's rolled back out. That way, when we apply more bitumen on top, the scrim will effectively be sandwiched between the two layers of bitumen. Now, using a scrim like this does make this type of repair slightly harder and messier than not using one, but there are two distinct benefits. 
Firstly, it guarantees a minimum depth of coating of two millimeters, meaning no dry spots or missed areas. Secondly, when dry, it will add additional strength, which is important if you have lots of cracks in your roof or it has a slightly soft feel to it. This, as you can imagine, helps to stop those cracks reappearing as the bitumen sealant dries out with age in the years to come. When you have the first half done, roll back the other half and start the process again. Now, there are two disadvantages of using a scrim, and here they are. Firstly, it's a messier job, and you have to keep passing over the roof, filling up any holes that reappear. This obviously takes a bit more time, and you will use a bit more product. Secondly, if your roof isn't flat or has nasty hollows or ridges in it, the scrim can resist following these contours, which will make it a lot more difficult, otherwise known as a pain in the arse. Okay, so here on the second run, I'm going to do exactly the same process, this time making sure that one scrim overlaps the first scrim by two to three inches. Then we're going to bicho it up just as we did before. On the third run though, I'm going to show you a slightly easier and lazier way to apply the scrim. Here I've just placed a couple of dobs of sealant onto the roof and I'm going to stick the scrim in it and roll it out into position. This time though, I'm just pushing the bitumen straight through the scrim from the top surface alone. Whilst this isn't as good as the previous method, it does still work. But like I said, it's a lazy method, not quite as good. Your roof, your choice at the end of the day. And of course, there's the no scrim method. If you're looking for a repair that's a little easier and cheaper, just apply the compound directly to the roof. Yes, the depth of the sealant becomes harder to judge and it doesn't add the strength that we've talked about. But you can always add a second coat later on and to be honest, I would do that as a matter of course anyway. Now all we're doing is covering the whole roof with a nice even coating, trying to achieve the two millimeter depth that we require. Covering the whole roof and working back to the ladder or exit point. With that done, you should now have something that looks like this. On a summer's day, it will be fully waterproof in about an hour and recoatable in five to 12 hours. What you want the surface to look like is something like this, nice and even with no pinholes. But sometimes, especially if you've used Scrim, you might get some small pinholes like me near the edges where I was trying not to flip bitumen A in the guttering and B on the floor below. A second coat of sealant here will play absolute dividends and because the hard work has already been done, recoating will be so fast it's almost embarrassing. Any small flicks of bitumen that find their way onto the floor can usually be dealt with by applying building sand generously to them and treading it in. Let it absorb the bitumen for as long as possible and then just sweep it up. For a really nice finish and to protect your hard work for longer, consider applying the solar reflective coating. Again, this stuff settles to the bottom and it will need a damn good stir until the solids flow freely. Then it's just a matter of cutting in around the edges with a two inch paintbrush and applying the solar reflective coating with a cheap nine inch roller, just as we did with the primer. Well, there you go. That's this project waterproof and done. I hope it proves useful. For links to some of the products I used here, along with the approximate cost, visit the website links provided. Or, if you think your flat roof needs replacing, why not check out the options and the roof costings on the website, links provided. Well, that's it. Please like, share or subscribe. Thanks for watching.